Hey what's up guys, jflash727 here, and welcome to yet another video. After the roaring and incredibly supportive success of my ultimate curry shiny hunting video, I decided it was about time to answer some questions that I've seen floating around, whether that be from my discord server, which you should definitely consider joining in the description below, or right here on YouTube. If you haven't already guessed, this video is a follow up to the previous video I made, which if you haven't already seen, I highly suggest doing so before watching this video. Now, many of these questions are more asked than others, but I decided I should try and answer as many as I can to better help your experiences. I'll have timestamps of all the questions in the description, so you can easily find any question you may be looking for. If you have any further questions that aren't answered in this video, write a comment with the hashtag, hashtag curry question, so I can easily respond and help. Now without further ado, let's jump right into these 23 questions I have answers to, which will be answered to the best of my ability. The answer to this one is fairly simple, which is no. My best guess is that NPC camps work differently than regular camps to set up. The most likely reason for this is because the NPC's Pokemon doesn't have a high enough sociability in order to let wild Pokemon spawn. That, or it's just it simply doesn't work. Don't forget, curry Pokemon cannot be hunted in the wild area, or the Crown Tundra, or the Isle of Armor. This is very important. <sighs> no. Like I said before, you cannot hunt in the wild area, Isle of Armor, or the Crown Tundra. All online features involving camp take place there. We actually have further information on this, after I was able to talk to an actual data miner about the matter. And the answer is no, it does not affect her encounters. While this is still only half speculated, there is evidence to back up the claim. I'm not knowledgeable in this field at all, so I'll use simple terminology so I don't get things wrong. The curry encounters fall into the same category that other Pokemon do. Examples of these Pokemon are like the Ambush, Impidimp, and Morgrim in the Glimwood Tangle, all of the Regis, the Motostoke Gymmons, and Regina's Trades in the Isle of Armor. All of these Pokemon follow a similar pattern in that they are all unaffected by the Shiny Charm, and the majority are all Star Shiny with a 1 in 16 square Shiny Champ. We'll just call these kinds of Pokemon scripted encounters. This is the best explanation I can give with what I am able to understand, as well as how you guys can understand it as well. Scripted encounters are not affected by any outside abilities, so no, they cannot. Like I said before, scripted encounters are not affected by many things. The KO counter boost and Pokedex recommendations are a few of them. Curry encounters are special, as they are always forced to have a mark by the game. Having the mark charm does not affect these encounters in any way, shape, or form. Pokemon that are all small and flat are all very good to use. If you want my personal recommendations, I would suggest you use a team full of Galarian Stunfist, Joltik, or Sizzlepeed. Curry encounters generate exactly how regular wild spawns would, so no, they cannot have a hidden ability. Just like before, curry encounters generate exactly how a regular wild spawn would, so getting good IVs are all up to RNG. Nope, the Pokemon's level will correlate to the level it can be found at on that route. As an example, Ice Q can be found at a level between 44 and 46 on Route 10. So, those are the possible levels your Pokemon can have. And now, just a quick break in between these questions. Make sure to consider subscribing to the channel, as it helps a lot. We're on the way to 1,000 subscribers, which would allow me to monetize my channel and make some money. This will allow me to make higher quality content for all you Pokemon fans. Also, liking the video will help greatly, as it'll help us push through the YouTube algorithm. And now, back to the questions. No, it'll show when you encounter it in camp. Here's an example on screen of what it looks like when it's shiny. Curry hunting is around for one reason, to get a shiny that has a very rare mark that no other shiny would normally have. This is only cosmetic and serves no other purpose. If you are looking to shiny hunt just to hunt, I would recommend using different methods, but 
If you would like a curry mark shiny, then you can gladly use this method. For some odd reason, every Pokemon gets along. If you want a team full of Marinian Corsola or Galicepod and Grathlock, you can 100% curry hunt with them. Sociability never degrades by time or in a box, so yes, you may absolutely leave camp and take a break, and return whenever you wish. Just like my disclaimer in my original video, it takes very long and it's RNG dependent. If you do this hunt, prepare to spend months, even a year on it. That's how slow it can be. That's up to you honestly. Go look back at my video where I talk about all the available Pokemon and choose a route that has a lot of Pokemon you like. Maybe you like Impidim and Choodle, then you should hunt in the Motorstoke outskirts. Nope, you can start curry hunting as soon as you unlock Pokemon Camp with any Pokemon level. There's no detriments to your spawns at all. Though, that would be a very cool feature. Sadly, this just isn't the case. You can use any berry flavor to get any curry spawns of any type of Pokemon. In a way, yes. This topic is still incredibly unclear at the moment, but it seems that as long as you have more than one Pokemon in your party, you can get curry spawns more frequently. I would recommend a team of 6 Pokemon to make things a lot easier and a lot less complicated. Like mentioned earlier, scripted Pokemon like Currymons have a 1 in 16 chance of being square shiny. Consider yourself extremely lucky if you get a square shiny curry Pokemon. You can choose not to encounter it and continue making curries, effectively skipping a little cutscene you get every time you talk to a wild Pokemon. I would suggest checking them though, especially Pokemon like Stunfisk, that are almost virtually impossible to tell if they're shiny. Though you get cool special golden utensils when completing your curry decks, they have no effect on the rating of your curry. Now, since some time has passed since I made the curry video, we have better information on this and I'll just describe it quickly. It seems as though the encounter table is flipped right on its head, and rare spawns become more common, and common spawns become more rare. Say you want to curry hunt on Route 3, and your target is the 1% Sizzlepeed. He would be the most common encounter you'd have, since he's the rare spawn on the route. If your target was the 35% Rookie Dito, he would be your rarest encounter, as he is the most common encounter on the route. We do not have exact percentages on any of those, but that's so far all we have are loose numbers for specific routes. And it looks like I've run dry of questions to answer. Hopefully this video was able to clear up some loose ends from the original video and allowed you to understand a bit better. Don't forget that any further questions can be asked using the hashtag curry question tag if anything is still unclear. I hope to see you guys in the next video, and if you have any suggestions as to what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future, then please do comment your ideas. And like always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!